Um, you guys are all really familiar in this class with the sequences and our pace and our rhythm. So tune into your breath, get really, really solid in that breath this month, okay? One other element I wanted to just bring into practice, I'll quickly talk about it and then we'll get rolling, is this idea of resiliency that we talk about. So when we talk about resiliency so far, we've talked about it in the sense of the breath and when it comes to the nervous system. But there's one other really important element to building resiliency and it has to do with bonding and belonging and kind of that um, uh, connection. Okay, between people. So I think this is important to discuss right now, especially with what's going on in the world. But I was just reading this study about how when we are really connected and bonded um, and secure with other people in our lives, we're actually much more able to regulate the states in the body when it comes to dealing with stress, anxiety, um, crisis, and stuff like that. And why I'm bringing this up is because not only is this practice important in the physical and mental space, but us coming together as a collective, even virtually, is really important to get that sense of belonging and security and confidence in the body and with this community that we're joining to. Okay, um, I'm going to be posting more on this this week. I'll be sending out an email about some of these really cool studies that they're doing when it comes to the effects of the heart when we're connected and we're a part of a group um, and the rates of heart disease. Okay, so these things are really interesting. We don't have time to talk about it all today, but I'll send out more on it. Just know that when we're coming together, when I'm saying your name, when we're practicing together, I want to really create this community and this sense of connection for you guys. Okay, beautiful. Love it. Let's come to, let's stand at the top of our mat. Start standing today. Good, let's find our spot. Find your big toes, so big toes together, heels slightly apart, arms by your side. Good, take a couple deep breaths into the body and just align yourself here. So notice how the body feels, what feels good, what feels tight. Just make a quick little awareness here. Good. As we stack here, start to tuck the tailbone, take a couple deep breaths in and out through the nose. These conscious breaths are extremely important for setting the pace and the tone for our practice, which we know, but also helping to regulate the body. Good. With your eyes closed, let's inhale our hands in front of heart center and let's set an intention for our practice today. With clarity, breathe that intention into the body. Good. And then with your next exhale, let's release our hands by our side. Beautiful. Let's interlace our hands in front of us. We're going to spin our palms straight up towards the ceiling and lengthen here out of the body. So keep lifting, keep lengthening. Big inhale. And with your exhale, let's fold forward, release your hands. Come on down. Utnasana. Good. Inhale, gaze comes up long through the spine. Plant your hands, jump or step back into high plank. Let's lower, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Find your feet, find your hands. Good, inhale, step your right foot in between your hands. Spin, drop your back heel. Let's rise up with the hands for Virabhadrasana A. Good, palms can touch. We're squaring the hips and the chest to the front of the mat. All right, a couple more breaths here. Yeah, good, Jim. With our next exhale, let's return our hands back down to the mat. Step back into high plank. Lower Chaturanga Dandasana. Strong through the core. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. And switching sides. Flow with your breath. Step your left foot in between your hands. Spin your back heel down to the mat. Let's rise up. Virabhadrasana A. Palms together if it feels okay. If it's too tight into the shoulders, bring your palms nice and far apart here. So just see what feels good. Good. And with your next exhale, hands come down. Step back into high plank. Let's lower. Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog. 
Exhale, downward facing dog. Once again, we settle into the hands and the feet. We become really grounded here. Maybe even close your eyes and then connect to your breath. Okay, let's bring our gaze forward. Jump or step to the top of your mat. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale to fold. Good. Inhale, let's rise all the way up. On the way up, interlace your hands. Spin your palms to face the roof. Gaze up and lengthen here. And then release your arms by your side into samasthiti. Beautiful. Again, interlace your hands. Push your palms up towards the sky. See how much you can lengthen to the back of the body. And then with your exhale, release your hands and fold forward. Utnasana. Inhale, gaze comes up. We plant our hands, make your way back into high plank. Lower Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. With a steady breath, step your right foot in between your hands. Drop your back heel. Let's rise up. Virabhadrasana A. Good. So all of us can sink a little deeper into that front knee and ground through the outer edge of your back foot for the last breath. With your exhale, spin your hands back down to the mat. Step back into high plank. Lower Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing duck. Exhale, downward facing duck. Good. And with your next inhale, step your left foot through. Drop your back heel. Let's rise up. Virabhadrasana A. So we're smooth, we're steady, and we're showing up really confident in our postures. We know the movement, we know the breath, so we can really just be here. Okay, let's lower hands back down to the mat. Step back. Run through your vinyasa with your own breath, your own pace, and we'll meet into downward facing dog. Let's see if you can spread your fingers nice and wide. Lift your toes up off the mat so you can really ground down evenly through the feet and then gently place your toes back down. One more breath here. Good. Next inhale, let's bring our gaze forward. Jumper steps to the top of your mat. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale to fold. Inhale, let's come all the way up. Interlace your hands halfway up. Spin your hands up towards the sky. Lengthen out of the body. And then release your hands by your side into samasitihi. Beautiful. Last time through. Interlace your hands. Spin your palms up towards the sky. Inhale. And exhale, release, fold forward. Inhale, gaze comes up. We plant our hands, jump or step back into high plank. Let's lower. Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Okay, let's step our right foot through. You know where we're taking the posture, Virabhadrasana A. Rise up with your hands. And with your exhale, bring your hands back down. Step back into high plank. Lower Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale. And exhale. Now our left foot glides through to the front. Spin your back heel onto the mat. Rise up. We're strong. We're steady. And the breath guides the movements. One big inhale. And exhale, release. Hands come down. We move through our vinyasa. Don't rush the breath. Take your time. And we'll meet in down dog. Very good. So 
So how much length can you find in the back of the body here? The hands are pushing strongly down into the mat. There's length between your ears and your shoulders. Good. Let's bring our gaze forward. Jumper steps to the top of your mat. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale to fold. Inhale up, come all the way up. Interlacing your hands, spin your palms up towards the sky, lengthen. And then release your hands by your side into samasitihi. Beautiful. Let's take our feet a little bit further apart. Inhale, rise up with your arms. And exhale, fold forward. So wherever your hands land is fine. They can be on your shins, your ankles, or catch you onto your big toes. Your elbows bend out to the side if you're hanging onto your toes and dig in nice and deep to the posture by finding more weight into your toes. Beautiful. See if you can relax the neck. Release the spine. Good. Feel your body starting to unravel here for you. Good. Now, for some of us, we may stay here for the next step, or you're going to catch on to your hands behind your back and bring your hands up towards the sky, working into the shoulders, or try to grab onto opposite elbow. So there's a few options there, or we just hang out in the first position. Good. Maybe if the neck is feeling stuck, you wave it from side to side, kind of bringing your glance from left to right. And then find the center point. See if you have a little more of a release. Let's take one more breath here. Good. Find your feet. Let's roll up through the spine. Make your way to the top of your mat. Releasing your hands into samasthitihi. Beautiful. Let's take a big step back with our right foot. We're going to pivot to face the back of the mat. So our toes are squared to the back. Our hips are squared. Inhale, reach the arms up towards the sky. And exhale, fold forward. So we've done this posture quite a bit. We're just walking our fingertips forward, staying high up onto the fingers and folding straight forward over your right leg. Now, in terms of the adjustment here, we always need to shift the right hip back slightly, left hip forward. And we know the pelvis is balanced when the feet feel balanced and the weight in the feet feel balanced. Good. And pull up on your kneecaps a little bit, strong through the legs. Beautiful. Now we're going to move into our twist. So let's take the left hand onto your right shin, right hand onto your sacrum, or you're opening the posture up. Left hand comes down onto the mat, right arm up towards the sky. So now how can we approach these postures with the back of the body in our mind? So we did these postures last month with the front of the body. Now how do we do it with the back of the body? Now let's unwind and move into Trikonasana or side triangle. So adjust the hands. Take your right hand onto your right shin, left hand up towards the sky, open through the body here. You may need to adjust the placement of your back foot. Good. So just our regular triangle posture. Now can you take that breath and bring it into your fingertips and send the breath through the back of the arms, the back of the spine, and the back of the legs, connecting to the soles of your feet. And with your next inhale, let's find our feet. Inhale, rise all the way up. Let's pivot around to face the top of our mat, squaring your feet, 
squaring your hips, adjust your feet as necessary. Good. Inhale, rise up with your arms. And exhale, let's fold forward over this left leg. Walk your fingertips forward. Stay high up onto the fingertips so we're engaging through the back of the body. Good, Robin. So here we tend to forget about the core and that central line. So pull up on the pelvic floor as well as the lower belly region. And then watch how now you should have a little more space to move into it. And both hands are down onto the mat or a block to start. Two more breaths here. Beautiful. Now we move into our twist. So right hand onto your shin or the block. Left hand onto your sacrum. Or we're opening up into the full posture. Yeah, beautiful, Jim. That's it. Good, Robin. Good, well, Nina, Steve. If you can, your gaze is up towards your left fingertips. Get comfortable with where your body is at right now. Beautiful. As we unwind, hands come down. Take your left hand onto your left shin. Step your back foot back slightly and we'll move into triangle, opening up through the chest. So right hand up towards the sky. Your left foot's forward. Beautiful. And then again, just adjust accordingly to your body. You guys know these postures well enough that if you close your eyes for a moment and you're breathing consistently, then all the guidance should be right there. Very good. And find our feet. Inhale, rise all the way up. Lengthen through the arms and come to stand at the top of your mat into Samastitiki. Okay, let's flow through a vinyasa. Inhale, rise up with your arms. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, gaze comes up. Plant your hands, jump or step back into high plank. Let's lower, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Okay, gaze comes forward, jump or step to the top of your mat. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale to fold. Inhale, let's rise up. Nice and strong, steady into the feet, steady into the body, and samastitihi. Beautiful. Now we're going to take a big step back with our right foot coming into Virabhadrasana B. So right toes towards the back, left angle towards the side. Let's sink into this front knee. Good. So now we're opening up nice and wide through the arms, through the chest, and then gaze comes straight forward. Good. Now here, can you soften your shoulders onto your back? Find a little more space between your shoulders and your ears, but find more reach into your fingertips. Beautiful. Let's take that left hand, slide it down your left leg. Right arm reaches up and over. So finding this beautiful length through the right side of the body but it's being supported by the lift in the left side. Good, our inhale guides us back up. Place your right elbow onto your right knee. Left arm reaches across your ear, point towards the back of your mat. Good, yeah, you got it. Right elbow, right knee, reach the top arm. If you need deeper, your right hand just comes to the inside edge of your right foot. Good. Now find the back of the body. Lengthen all the way from the tailbone to the crown of the head. Strong into the feet. Our inhale guides us up. Straighten the front leg. Let's pivot on the toes and we'll switch sides. Left toes forward. Let's move into Virabhadrasana B on the left. Sink into that front knee. Long through the arms, through the fingertips. 
Uh, just facing now the long edge of our mat, feeling this opening through the chest, through the pelvis. Now watch your breath. Good. Take that right arm, slide it down your right leg. Left arm reaches up and over. And as we lift, sink back into that left knee nice and deep. The strength is there. It's just the mind that gets in our way. Three more breaths. With your third breath, let's rise all the way up. Place your left elbow onto your left knee, right arm reaches across. So again, keep that fluid movement, that flow here. Yeah, perfect, you got it, Jim. Good, Robin. You can either stay here if you need deeper, left hand comes down onto the mat. Now watch your connection to the breath. See if you can match mine so that we start to breathe and move as a collective. Good. With your next inhale, let's rise all the way up, straighten your front leg, and come to stand at the top of your mat into Sanastitihi. Good. Let's take a vinyasa here. Inhale, rise up with your arms. Exhale, fold. Inhale, gaze comes up. Let's plant the hands, jump or step back into high plank. Let's lower Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. And let's pause here in down dog for a few breaths. Become steady. Good. Now from here, let's bring our gaze forward. Walk your feet towards your hands and just take a nice forward fold again. We're going to shift into half moon posture. So you may need your block here. We're going to start on the left side. So either placing your left fingertips out in front of you or onto your block. Shift all the way to the left side of the body. Right hand onto your hip. Let's start to open up here into half moon. Good. And if you can, right hand comes up towards the sky. Beautiful. These look so good. Good. Keep lifting that top leg. Keep extending through the crown of your head. <laughs> Beautiful. We're here for two more breaths. And as we unwind, place both hands down onto the mat. Keep lifting your right leg up. Good. So fingertips are down onto the mat. We're squared now through the hips. Good. Now you can either stay here or if you want an add challenge, we're going to hover the fingertips above the mat. Kind of like floating posture, flying posture. But keep reaching the fingertips down. Keep Grounding the belly up for three, for two, and one. Beautiful hands come down. Your right foot comes down and take a forward fold. Maybe give a little shake to the legs to just find some release on that left side. Beautiful. Let's switch sides. So set up for the right side. Have your block handy if you need your block. So right fingertips on the mat. Or on the block, all the way to the right side. Left leg lifts, left hand onto your hip. Half moon posture on the left. Eventually, maybe your left fingertips come up. Good. And if there's still wobbles in the body, that's fine. But can you keep the breath steady? Good. From here, lower your left hand down to the mat. Square your hips. Keep lifting the left leg. You're either staying here or you're going to try and lift your fingertips just off the mat. Keep reaching through the arms. Keep rolling the left hip down. We're here for five. For four. Three. Two. And one. Beautiful. Lower your fingertips. Lower your feet. You're going to give a little shake. Fold forward. Good. 
out. Planting your hands onto the mat or your shins. Inhale, lengthen, gaze comes up. Plant your hands down onto the mat. Jump or step back into high plank. Shoulders come over your wrists. Let's lower Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. And let's step our right foot in between our hands. Drop your back knee down onto the mat. Good. Let's first start with your toes. Your back toes are tucked under. Hands are onto your hips. Now, for some of us, we're just going to stay here. This might be intense as it is, just into the back of the legs here. Or if you want to start to access the back of the body, you're going to take your fingertips and start to reach them back behind you. Now, a trick with the blocks at home, if you have blocks and you're quite close to the mat, you can come and rest onto the blocks with your fingertips. Okay. So as you are reaching back, keep sinking into that front knee. Let's unwind, come on back up, place your hands onto your hips. Just reestablish that connection with the front foot. Again, staying here or take your right hand onto your right knee. Left hand comes around and catches on to the top of your left foot. Now again, we've approached this posture last month with the front of the body in mind. How can you access the back of the body? Maybe all that is, is pulling everything in the front and sucking it towards the back so that we have this long, strong line there. One more breath here. Good. Let's release that side. Bring your hands down onto the mat. And we're going to work into half splits or full splits. Okay, so half splits, we just walk that foot forward, toes come up, and we're using maybe blocks here. Perfect. Or we're coming into our full splits. You guys find that perfect posture. Good. Now, when I'm accessing this posture with the front of the body in mind, I'm always lifting the chest here. When I'm thinking of it from the back of the body, again, I'm hugging the front towards the back and almost curling just slightly into myself here. It should feel a little bit different. Good. Soften your jaw, soften your shoulders. Take a couple more breaths. Trust in this collective space and what this practice is doing for you without it being visible to the eye right now. Good. Let's slowly unwind from the posture and we'll make our way into downward facing dog. We want to keep moving. We want to keep breathing. So right away, let's step our left foot in between our hands. Drop your back knee down to the mat. Back toes tucked under. Let's take our hands onto our hips to start. Good. First, we establish a connection here with the front of the leg. And then if you did so on the other side, you can start to bring your fingertips back behind you and find this beautiful opening through the front of the body, which is supported by the strength in the back. Good. Our inhale guides us back up to center. Left hand onto your left knee, right hand either onto your hip or catching on to your back foot. Good. Breathe in, settle into the posture. And sometimes when it is so intense, if you actually move a little deeper, it'll shift the intensity and start to spread it out throughout the body. Good. Can you breathe a little deeper? Good. 
let's release your back foot and move into your version of your split. So either half splits, toes come up, or your full splits. How do we find patience and self-love in this practice? When we are used to moving at 100 miles an hour, maybe seeing results right away, how do we settle into this new way? Letting go of all the judgments or expectations and being really present so that the magic can actually start to happen. Let's unwind. Move your blocks off to the side. We'll step back into high plank. Let's lower Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. And let's bring our gaze forward and jump all the way through onto our seat. Good. So just coming into a bit of a strengthening postures here. We're going to move into Navasana. So this is our half boat posture. I'm going to walk you through the steps. So light onto the toes. You can start by holding onto the back of your legs. This is our first variation. Second variation, you release your hands. And third, we straighten our legs. Good. A little taller through the chest. We're going to hold here for four. Three, two, one. Cross your ankles out in front of you. Place your hands by your side. And we're going to try and lift up. So lifting the feet, lifting the bum for three, two, and one. Good. If that's too hard, we keep our feet onto the mat and we just lift our bum up. Okay? We have two more sets. Let's come back into Navasana. So find your boat posture. <laughs> I'm probably back with you guys. Good. Pull everything in. We're here for three. For two. For one. Let's rock forward. Cross opposite ankle over. Hands by your side. Inhale. Let's find a lift here. For three. Two. And one. Good, Jim. Let's release. Last time through. Steve, Wilhelmina, I'm sure they look beautiful. Let's come back. Good, Robin. Keep lifting through the chest. Bend your knees if you need to. For three, two, one. Last time, rock forward. Cross your ankles and inhale. Let's find a lift. For three, for two, and one. Beautiful. Let's release, strain your legs out in front of you. Good, now let's take our right foot and send it back behind us. If this is okay with the knee, you're gonna work here. Now for some of us, this may be too intense on the front knee, you can just bring your foot back in front, okay? So a couple options here. If this is okay, let's take our left hand, walk it down our left leg, right arm reaches up and over. So now we just created a ton of energy with those strengthening postures. Maybe your breath sped up a little bit. See if you can drop it back down. Take a couple really deep, slow breaths. Close your eyes. And see instead of the energy being erratic in the body, if you can just add a little direction and control to it. Where do you wanna send that energy? Let's find our inhale, come all the way back up. 
You're going to keep your knees where they are. So either in front or back. And then just take a forward fold now over this left leg. So centering now to the front of our mat. Yeah, good, Jim. That's perfect. Good, Robin. If there are any injuries, any back issues happening, just slow things down. If there's any pain, just back out and see if you can find more of a comfortable position for where your body is at right now. Let's start to walk our hands back up, stand up nice and tall. Let's take this right foot, swing it all the way around, and step it on the other side of your left leg. Good. Coming into our twist, left arm wraps around your right, right fingertips back behind you. Sit up nice and tall, and then find your depth or your variation. Lots of us will be hooking on the outside edge of that right knee, or maybe even working into a bind. Try not to collapse into that lower back. See if you can rock forward onto your sit bones. Yeah, perfect. That looks much better. And then twist from there. Beautiful. Let's bring your gaze back through center. You can release your hands, unwinding from the posture. Straighten your right leg, and then we'll switch sides. So take your left foot back behind you, if it's okay with your knee, or you can just leave it to the inside edge of that right leg. Okay. Take your right hand down your right leg. Left arm reaches up and over. Good. Yeah, perfect. That's perfect, Jim. Use that other arm to support you and find that length. Good, Wilhelmina, good, Steve. Good, Robin. Find the length, soften your ears, or soften your shoulders away from your ears, soften your jaw, take a couple deep breaths as you maybe move a little deeper. And our inhale guides us back up. We just simply adjust so that we're more squared to the front of our mat. And then we take a forward fold over this right leg. Good. Drop your gaze long through the neck. And then send your breath into the back of the body. So the back of the body starts at the soles of your feet. It runs up the back of the legs. Runs up the central point of the back. And then the back of the arms into the back of the hands. Good. So if you can just imagine these lines being drawn on the body, you will be amazed how you naturally start to adjust, adjust and shift. And let's rise back up. We'll move into our twist. Take that left foot, swing it all the way around. Step it onto the outer edge of your right foot. Right arm hooks on the outside edge of your left knee. Left hand back behind you. And then move into your variation of your twist. Remember, a lot of us will be rocking back. See if you can rock a little more forward. So lean your weight forward. Yeah, that was perfect, Jim. Good. Good, Robin. You'll find a little more length through the crown of the head and a little more space to twist into. Yeah, let's release our hands, unwind. Let's come to lay flat onto our back. Good. 
That's so three back bends. Let's find our setup, knees up towards the sky, feet flat onto the mat. Guys, and then inhale, move into whatever step is best for you. So for some of us, we're just lifting our pelvis. Some of us were pushed onto the crown of the head or up into your full wheel. Good. We're going to be here for four. Turn your heels out slightly for three, two, one. Let's come all the way down or onto the crown of the head just to reset for one breath. Full exhale. And then let's rise up for second set. We're here for four. Three, two, and one. Good. Onto the crown of the head or flat onto your back for one breath. Beautiful. Last time through. Inhale. Let's rise up. We're here for five. Four, three, two, and one. Beautiful. Tuck your chin. Let's come to lay flat onto the back. Go ahead, bring your knees into your chest. Take a big breath. Let it out through your mouth. Let's do one more of those. In through the nose. Out through the mouth. Let's rock ourselves back up onto our seat. Good. Let's take our legs straight out in front of us for a forward seated fold. This is always my favorite posture to do after back bends because now we move the spine in the opposite direction. So curl into yourself. Literally feel yourself melting into your legs. Drop the gaze, drop your head. And allow the spine to do what it does best. It needs fluidity. It needs movement. Good. Let's roll up through the spine. We're going to cross our ankles, come forward onto our hands and knees, and we'll set up for our headstand practice. So all of you are doing headstands that are on the class today. So find your posture. We're not here for super long, not as long as we were doing last month. Good. Align your hands so elbows are quite close together. You can use a block if you're using blocks or you're interlacing your hands, palms wide, crown of the head onto the mat. Straighten your legs like downward facing dog. Walk your toes forward. If you're doing prep posture, you're just lifting one foot. If you're coming all the way up, find the strength to find that lift. Good. Little weight on the crown of the head because your shoulders are extremely active. You're pushing tons of weight down into your forearms. Good. Keep lengthening through your toes and settle into your breath. Good. If you're still up, let's slowly control, make our way back down onto the mat. And we'll all rest into child's posture. Take your knees nice and wide. Good. Reach your arms out in front of you. Rest your forehead down. Let everything just settle back in. Let's start to walk our hands back up. Let's shift the feet off to the side. Final little posture here, just to create a little energy. We're working into Uputihi. So 
few options, kind of similar to what we did before. Your ankles are going to be crossed out in front of you. Good. Hands by your side. And you're either just lifting your bum off the mat or we're lifting everything off the mat. Okay. Perfect. So a couple sets here. Let's start with our right ankle crossed over our left, hands by your side. Inhale, let's lift. So either just the bum or the feet as well. Good. We're here for five, four, three, two, and one. Good. Let's release. Take a break. Let's switch sides with your feet the way they're crossed. Big inhale. And then let's come up for another five. Good. Four, three, two, and one. Beautiful. Let's come down and come to lay flat onto our back into Shavasana. So once again, the stimulation of energy from the strengthening postures, how do you want to direct it into your body? So get yourself extremely comfortable here. Let's bring our palms facing up towards the sky. Take a couple cleansing breaths into the nose, out through the mouth. Helping to melt away any remaining stress, anxiety in the body. as you prepare for this sacred time of silence and stillness in the body. So find your posture, settle in for the next minute or so. See how still and how quiet you can remain here. As you lay here in this healing state, let's start to bring a couple deep breaths back into the body. Just awakening ourselves back into this space. Keep your eyes closed. And when you're ready in your own time, you can bring your knees in towards your chest for a few breaths. And when you're ready, gently making your way onto your side. And in your own time, in your own space, coming up to a comfortable seated position at the top of your mat. And once you've found your seat, there's no rush. You can even stay laying on your back if that feels more comfortable for you. We have a tall spine. See how comfortable you can get here so that we can find stillness for just one breathing exercise and our short meditation. Good. A few natural breaths, pulling the breath down into the belly. And then we're going to continue our work with breaking the inhale into three equal parts. The exhale is one long, smooth breath out. So to begin, let's take a full inhale through the nose. Full exhale. Good. Inhale, just the lower part. Pause. Inhale through the center. Pause. 
and then inhale all the way to the peak. The peak, hold your breath for four, three, two, one, and exhale through the nose. Good, again, inhale the lower part, pause, inhale, pause, inhale to the peak, pause for four, three, two, one, exhale through the nose. Good, two more rounds, inhale, Pause, inhale, pause, inhale to the peak, hold and retain for four, three, two, one, and exhale. Good. Do the last one on your own. And then soften back into your natural breath. In and out through the nose. Gently observe this natural rhythm that is going to guide you deeper into a state of relaxation and into your meditation. This rhythm is the framework for you to move inwards. This rhythm is the exact pace that we need to be in our power of self-healing. This exact rhythm moves us into a quiet mind. And we gently move our awareness to the space just out there in front of us, just outside of the physical body. Noticing the space that exists there. And then we gently move our awareness to the back of the body, following the spine. And noticing the space that exists there. And we notice the space that exists all around the physical body. We notice the texture, the smell, and the sensation of being out here in space. No restrictions, no constraints by the material world. We feel the infinite amount of energy and power that exists here. We start to call this power into the body. Now recognizing the power and strength that resides within us. The breath moves a little bit deeper. And as we sit here in this stillness, in this 
realm of possibility, take two deep breaths back into the body. Let's inhale our hands in front of heart center. Beautiful, recognizing the power that we are able to cultivate when we come together as a collective. When we start to bond and create belonging, we start to nourish resilience in our system. Thank you very much, everyone. Namaste.